So my cauliflower kind of snuck up on me. I've been out there checking on it pretty regular and uh, I could see where it was starting to wrap at the bottom, but I hadn't really done anything. And I went out there the other day and I got cauliflower all over the place. And um, this is a purple cauliflower, the graffiti. And sometimes this will be a darker shade of purple. Sometimes it'd be a little lighter. Depends on a lot of sun gets to it, it'll kind of blanch it out and it'll be a little more lavender color like this. If you get some good wrapping on it, it's going to be more kind of darker like that. Yep. This stuff is pretty and it's really good for you. It and is. I'm going to show you how I like to cook it. Cauliflower? Mm-hmm. So, let me get my stuff out here. We promised when we was moving to our new studio that we was going to do a little more cooking demonstrations. Well, you got all your gizmos out here. I got everything. I got everything. Got me a bowl here. You hold that bowl, okay? I'll be the bowl holder. Got my air fryer here. We'll air talk fryer. about that in just a second. Right. That's a handy little unit. So I'm going to just take this and I'm just going to kind of, if you'll catch those. Well, we lost one there. Lost one. We're just going to take these little pieces here, kind of break them up a little bit. And... Uh, Make a mess, of course. So you don't cook the main stem there? No, I just cut them off like yep. that. Okay. Then, what we'll do, we'll put some little olive oil in there. Get them nice and coated. Some of that there. And uh, put a little, little pepper on them. We talking about fresh ground pepper too? Fresh ground pepper. And I like this old Lowry's garlic salt here. Put a little yeah. bit of that on there. And toss that around there for me, sir. Oh. All right, so we got it tossed around in there. Now this little gizmo here if you're not familiar with it, it's called an air fryer. Never had one. They're big and they take up a lot of space and I'm not one to have a bunch of appliances on the counter. But I will say this thing here is quite handy. I wasn't a huge fan when my wife brought one home, but I, I've kind of got to liking it. And um, sometimes on those fast supper nights, you can cook up some chicken nuggets for the youngins pretty quick in there. So you, got, you can control your temperature on there and then uh, you got a timer and then there's where you there's where your magic happens so what happens is it's like a it's like a little mini oven and it circulates the air around there um it's like cooking you know those raised racks you can put on your oven it's kind of like that so you get air circulation all around and uh cooks everything real nicely so we're going to put our cauliflower in here And because this thing ain't real loud, but it's a little bit loud. So I'm gonna take it in the other room and let this cook. And then I'll go get it when it's ready in about 15 minutes. I'll be waiting on While you. I'm gone, you can talk about what you brought there. All right, believe it will. All right, go for it. So, <clears throat> Travis is always working with me. And I wanna show these carrots I grew. This is the I've had trouble growing carrots in the past, but uh, I grow this here white carrot here this year, and I want to show it, you know, share it with Travis because he's been on to me about not being able to grow my carrots. Every time he grows, walks out there in my garden, he pokes a little fun at my carrot growing. But I want you to look right there. I'm back in. I'm coming back in. Oh, are you? I'm, I'm showing my white carrots. White carrots. They is such things as a white carrot. Really? Yeah, it's called white satin carrot. A lot of times you buy a rainbow blend of carrots. You get them, but uh, I might have been born at night. I wasn't born last night. Well, I'll tell you what I have found out this year. That don't year. look nothing like a carrot top. Well, it's... It looks like yeah. a radish top. It does? Me. Okay. Well, this year I planted two big areas of cover crop, and I planted mustard greens and daikon radishes. Mm -hmm. Now, we know daikon radish is an excellent cover crop because it scavenges nutrients up and keeps them in your top profile of your soil. 
But what I didn't know was they're also good to eat. And I was just telling all the good folks out there that a lot of used in Asian dishes. Mm -hmm. And I've actually seen them in Publix for sale before. And I peeled me one off and tried to eat it, and I didn't care a lot for it. But I want you to try this right well, here. Was it a little spicy? Well, it just didn't suit me real good. But what I did here, look at there. I made you a like dish. You I want you to try that. Like right. you did your karabi? Well, so yeah, sort of similar. Really similar to that. Balsamic vinegar, lime juice, and some cavenders there. And that turned out pretty dog good. good. Yeah, I could eat that on a hot dog or anything like mm -hmm. that. I could even eat it on a hamburger. That's good. So there you have it. A dual purpose cover crop, mustard greens and daikon radishes that does good for the soil, but you can also eat off of them. And I'm going to tell you, I got a truckload of these out here in the garden. Yeah. I hear people get pretty good money for them things. I want to go back to the cauliflower thing real quick. Because I showed you the purple ones, and my purple ones are just average size, but I got some monsters for my snowball cauliflower. Let me hang it. It's heavy. There you go. My, my. So that there, folks, is, uh, and this is official weight, as a five and a half pound white cauliflower. And that one wrapped real good. It's yes, nice it and is. white. Look, look, folks, see nice right and there. pretty. Now, what white. variety would that be? That's our snowball. A snowball. And um, when it comes to cauliflower and broccoli, the bigger you want to grow, big plants, because big plants gonna mean big heads. And then, if you got some puny-looking broccoli plants, you're gonna probably have some small heads. If you got some puny-looking cauliflower plants, you're gonna have some small heads. You got to feed them plants pretty big so uh, they'll make them big heads and, and a lot of people don't realize this that you struggle with broccoli cauliflower they are relatively heavy feeders they are and the trick to it is is feed them early because if some plants get stunted they will not put them big heads they're on that's probably the biggest that's not average by any means that's probably one of the biggest ones i've ever grown but uh you that's can, a monster there yeah. you can you do can well at the county fair with that i want to talk about the wrapping real quick so Here's a little smaller one. This one's probably only about two or three pounds. This is probably closer to what I'm averaging on these snow bowls. And if you're just growing them at home, this may not make a whole lot of difference. Some of that purple rubbed off on that one. So you get this purple in here when they get exposed to sunlight, okay? So sometimes these plants will wrap really good like this one was. I've, of course, pulled it back so we could see it, but sometimes those leaves will wrap and cover the entire thing, kind of protect it. This one wasn't wrapped as well. It was a little more exposed, and that's where you get some of that purple in there. In the summertime, it'll actually be kind of yellowing instead of purpling. If you're just eating them at the house, nobody, that's not going to bother. If you're selling for market, a lot of times people want the all all nice bleach white heads. But that just goes to show you if you don't wrap them or if they don't wrap all the way. Now some people will take rubber bands and wrap them up. Um, just the difference between them. Now the new variety yeah. we got this Twister is supposed to be known for its wrapping. Yeah, capability. Twisters, when I got some of that started in the greenhouse, it's supposed to be really, really a good wrapper. But if, uh, if any of y'all have had a good crop of cauliflower, I know I've seen several folks on our Row by Row Facebook group posting some. Um, let me know if, you, if anybody else out there ended up with some five and a half, six pound cauliflower heads, send us a picture, let us know. It's that time of the year where all my winter crops are coming in, with the exception of Brussels sprouts. My Brussels sprouts are putting on, but we're eating out of the garden on everything else. Um, collars, I got collars galore. Broccoli, of course, cauliflower, turnips. Man, everything's coming in right here, the holidays, and it's being good to eat. And those Brussels sprouts are putting on, it's going to take them a little bit longer. Yeah, and w normally this time would have came a little earlier, but it got pushed back because we had such a hot, long, kind of extended summer, and that pushed back some of our planting, and uh, these crops didn't start really taking off until we got a little break in the temperature. And we've had a dry back. fall. I was out there this morning uh, looking at my garden, and it was dry. Yeah. I had to water a little bit. I got to show you one more thing. Or dry winter. Now that fellow across the road over there has grew him a bunch of cabbage. But I don't believe he's grown any like this. Mm -mm. 
Well, that'd be considered the number one. That's the number one. I weighed this one. This one come in at seven and a half pounds. Wow. And that's that's a we can. What variety is this? Let's let's let's, let's, let's clean her up so everybody can see what she looks like here. That makes some good chicken food right there, won't it? Yep. All right, that's probably enough. Yeah. So this is the Cheers cabbage right here, and. I haven't always had the best success growing big old cabbages in the past, but I think I got it figured out. You got to, you got to feed them early. It's kind of like that broccoli. You know, tilling in some of that chicken manure compost definitely helps. You know, the commercial guys around here put almost as much nitrogen to their cabbage as they do their corn when they're growing. And we know corn's a very heavy feeder. It just shows you how much nitrogen it takes to make a big old head of cabbage. They'll put anywhere to five or six pounds of pure in per thousand square feet, which is a lot. Now we've been eating, me and the wife been eating these. Uh, we didn't eat several heads and I've just been, I chop them up, put them in a skillet, it was some olive oil, salt and pepper, and then I'll finish them off with a little bit of that Koneka sausage from over in Evergreen, Alabama. Uh, and what, me and her can go, one of these big old heads, I cut up the whole thing, that's enough for supper and for one of us to take a little bit to lunch, because it mm. gets good to me. I, yeah. we, we can take down a, almost a whole head. I made some coleslaw with it for some pulled pork sandwiches. And um, I'm really, really happy with this Cheers variety. Yep, big old fine head. Did you grow any of this? Or you I have some, but mine's not as quite as far as long as yours are. I, mine's probably going to be a little bit bigger than yours, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, what else I want to talk about? We talked about the air fryer. One other thing. That, How long does that thing take? Uh, about 15 minutes. Okay. I got some money in Washington. They're okay. going to let me know. Um, uh, uh, speaking of appliances, so I made a little investment this Christmas, and I bought my wife one of them KitchenAid stand mixers. You know, they've been around forever. We just have never had one, and that is one of the best investments I have ever made. Over these holidays, cookies. I'm talking about she made a pound cake yesterday. And, um, well, I can tell you, I love me some cookies. I, I do, too. And, I, and, I, and I, I, she actually brought us a couple, and I ate some. They were good. But the new wear off, I bought the... Uh, Miss Hoss one a few years ago, and the same thing happened, and you wore off pretty quick, and I ain't getting no cookies in a long time. Well, maybe you need to recharge her a little bit. Yep. Maybe uh, I need to wrap it up and give it to her again. Yeah. Something other. Anyway, my, my money has been well spent thus far yep. with that. Um, seeds start. We talk about we got stuff coming in in the garden, stuff producing. That also means we all, that now's the time we need to be starting seeds. For that early spring crop. Yeah, that early spring window. And we're so that, what we're planting right now will come off about the time that we need to be planting our spring crops so we get a good succession right, planting right. there. So I got a lot of stuff started in the greenhouse, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we're coming. But but we you always kind of got to be mindful when you got stuff coming in, what am I going to plant there next? And, and uh, you know, seeds... Transplants usually take on average about four to five weeks to come off, so we gotta be prepared for that mm -hmm. and, uh, and have stuff ready to plant. Uh, if you on our email newsletter, we sent out an email earlier this week talking about we've got all of our new varieties on a single page on the mm -hmm. website there. It says new for 2020. And a lot of them. And we've talked about a few of these, and I wanna just mention a few more today that I'm excited about. Uh, the first one, so I showed you the Cheers cabbage. Now, another variety I've added that a lot of people told me they really like is this here, Bobcat cabbage. And you can look at the picture on that uh, seed packet there and tell that's some dense, nice, dense heads of cabbage. So this Bobcat here, I've got some of this started in the greenhouse uh, along with some more Cheers, and we'll be able to grow them side by side. But I've heard a lot of good things about this Bobcat. Another thing I've got I'm really excited about is this Ruby Fresh Baby Swiss chard. A baby Swiss chard, that's a new one on me. Okay, so I'm gonna grow this just like I've got my top soy and other intensive greens planted right now uh, that are almost ready to harvest. I've got some arugula, some top soy, and some savanna mustard on a two foot elevated bed planted real thick. So that doesn't color up. Well, the stems do, but it don't color it would up. Get, it, it would get bigger. I'm okay, you sure. just cut it when it's smaller. I got right. You. Yeah, it's same like with that savanna mustard. It will get big if you let it, but I think it's it's more engineered to be able to grow it real densely uh, 
for like a salad mix or something. So I'm gonna plant some of this real thick yeah. and looking forward to that. And then lastly, we've got this pepper here and I've grown this before and you wanna talk about making this Greek pepperoncini pepper makes. Now, if you've ever got a pizza from Papa John's, you've got one of these, they put one of those in the box and you can buy them in the jars pickled. They're really good to pickle. They got a little bit of heat to them, but not a whole lot. Good salad, pepper, and uh, really, really productive. So I'm excited about those. Mm. And then speaking of the new year, happy new year to everybody. We didn't mention that. Um, some things we got coming up in the new year. I want to mention a few of our show topics. We kind of keep a running list of what we want to talk about. And, and these are not in any particular order, but things we're planning new shows for the new year and if you've got any other ideas uh, put those in the comments there and we'd love to hear about them so we can add them to the list so we're going to do a show on wheel hoe attachments so we've had a lot of people asking do a show showing all the attachments comparing all the attachments when to use them what soil types and all that and speaking of attachments i've been working on one uh oh yep a new prototype should have it in this week we're going to do some testing on it it'll be a little while before we get all the kinks worked out of it maybe get it in production but uh it's looking promising that'd be fun i have seen a picture of the prototypes and they're supposed to show up anytime good deal good deal that's exciting we're also going to do a show on comparing our garden cedar versus our cedar attachments one of our most frequently asked questions which one of those cedars will work best for me and we'll go through each of those and tell you why another thing that we want to talk about on a future show crop rotation strategies a lot of people don't know which crops are in the same family and which ones aren't, which they can follow with which, and we want to talk about that and go over that in a little more detail. And that is a perfect one to follow corn with right there. Mm -hmm. Just give you an example, crop, good crop rotation. Scavenge some of that phosphorus and yep. stuff way down there. Well, also we're going to do pretty soon probably a show on seed starting and seed starting mistakes that we see boo-boos people make. And then probably as we approach spring, do another show on drip irrigation and frequently asked questions on yep. drip irrigation. And, uh, and we'll be glad to take your suggestions and add to those as well, just to give you a little idea of what we'll be talking about this year. All right, speaking of New Year's and New Year's resolutions. 2020. 2020. It's... Uh, it, it doesn't seem like the decade has passed by this fast, but, yeah. but it has. I'm like the old commercial says, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I'd have took a little better care of myself. Yeah, yeah. And this is, we've been doing this for about, hostel's been around since about 2009, 2010. So um, that was that was our startup decade there, 2010. Well, there's been a lot of lessons learned in the last 10, 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> so last year, this time of year, we did a show and we, we mentioned some New Year's resolutions and uh, for 2019. And before we jump into our 2020 resolutions, I want to kind of revisit those 2019 ones and yeah. kind of see how we did. Right. Um, so the first one here you had, uh, you said you was going to do a better job with your soil health, more cover crops, compost, and reducing soil inputs. How do you feel you did with that? I one? feel like I've done a lot better with that. Also, I've reduced my tillage a lot, dramatically. Mm -hmm. I've reduced my tillage. I did a better job with my cover crops. Where I failed at is I didn't add as much compost or chicken manure uh, pre-plant on a couple of occasions. So that's where I have failed at. And I've seen other people that did do that and it made a huge difference. Other people meaning? Miss Hoss. She, she did it in her garden, it made a huge difference. So, uh, I mean, I grew some, some nice stuff, don't get me wrong, but she outdid me a couple of times on some things and it was strictly due to adding that manure or that organic matter or that compost pre-plant. Yeah. And I knew this all along, but sometimes I get in a hurry and I don't go out there and do it like I should, but adding that compost, and I've told people this a lot of times, good compost make you look like a hero. Uh -huh. It does wonders for your soil mm. and for your plants. I hear if you do it right, you can grow some real big cabbage that's and what, cauliflower. That's what I hear too. I hear. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so one of the things you wanted to do was create your dream garden, and that's going pretty good. Right, yeah. So we did do that, and uh, we uh, we got our dream garden going. It, it was rough, the first crop we grew in there, but this second round, the 
the fall crops we've grown in there done pretty good. Still got one little plot that you have little issues with as far as soil tilt, is my correct? Yeah, it doesn't drain real well. We got to do some work on there. I told you to add some gypsum. I think gypsum will help with that. I add some gypsum. I'm going to add some gypsum in there. If I have to, I'll get me a load of, of some high dollar stuff, but I'm trying to avoid doing that because that stuff's about four or five hundred dollars a load. Yep. All right, your second one, you said you was gonna do a better job with succession planting, being ready to plant the next crop when one crop is starting to decline. Yeah, I've done a lot better with that. And this, this is a common problem people have at garden. When you got something that's ending its life in the garden, you wanna leave it out there because you think you can go out there and scavenge some of it a little later on and you wanna get, get all the goody out of it. Well, go to that, that last tomato. That last, last tomato, or, yeah. That last cucumber, or that last, go ahead, get it out of the way because that's where you have a lot of your pest problems and you build up some issues by leaving them out there too long. When they start going downhill, get them out, clean them up, get something else planted. And I have done better at that. All right. And how about you growing more cover crops? So I said I was going to grow more cover crops, especially in the summertime. And uh, I, I did uh, quite a bit of cover crop growing and uh, experimenting with some different things. and. As far as, now everybody's soil type and situation is different, but as far as my soil type and what really was the home run hitter as far as a warm season cover crop was growing the sorghum sedan grass and mowing it every couple weeks. Letting it get one foot tall or so, 18 inches tall and going in there and mowing it, letting it grow back and just keep mowing it and mowing it and, and letting those clippings fall on the soil. Um, I had good luck with sun, hemp, millet, buckwheat's a great, fast, uh, warm season cover crop. But as far as the maximum benefit, I think that sorghum sedan grass, planting it thick and going in there and cutting it every couple of weeks, that, man, it, it did wonders. Yep. Okay, and then our third one here, uh, we'll do a little flashback. I'm going to roll the clip from uh, last year's show and then you can address it, okay? You ready? Yeah. Lose 35 pounds. Lose 35 pounds. Lose 35 pounds. We're just going to leave that one there. Okay, so how you doing on that one? I need to, my New Year's resolution is to <laughs> lose 40 pounds. Okay, you yeah. done up there. I done up there any little bit because I might have gained a little bit. Uh, yeah, I didn't do good. I ain't done good on my weight loss thing. And I'll tell you what the issue is. The issue is these overalls. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you wear get used to wearing these overalls and you got plenty of room and you don't realize what's happening inside there. Uh -huh. And things are getting bigger. You know, you're, you're swelling a little bit, yeah. and you don't realize it. And next thing you know, you got to church, put your prayer in britches on, and you say, ooh. So anyhow, I think I need to lose about 40 pounds now. Okay. So you might have gained five. I may have. 35. I may, I may have. Okay. I may have. Okay. All right. How about planting more multi-harvest squash? I mean, excuse me, plant more multi-harvest crops for you and plant more winter squash in the spring. So I, I did plant. More winter squash, because I was in the early stages of my dream garden, it, it didn't go as well. They weren't as productive as I'd like them to be. I think I'll be doing much better this year with that. You know, the, the market's not there for it in the springtime. The people just don't want winter squash in July. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. Uh, as far as the multi-harvest crops, I did pretty good with that, and I, I'm fine-tuning that as far as finding grow what works, don't grow what, what I can. I can't grow real well. And I grew a heap of okra this past year and that, that really came through for me in the summertime when a lot of stuff, other stuff wasn't really What producing. do you feel like you failed at? What do I feel like I failed at? What I, crop? What crop? I, I feel like I fail at Brussels sprouts every year. Yeah, well, I was normal. Uh, I got some work to do on my leeks and I got a video coming out. What on about your lakes. tomatoes? Tomatoes were just okay, but I, I attribute that to a lot of the dream garden stuff. I, I expect to have much better. I'm gonna work with you on that. Uh, tomatoes, um, yeah. I'm gonna work with you on the carrots as yeah. well. All right, so now let's get into our 2020 resolutions. Wow. Okay, so what we got for 2020? And I'll start off. So my first 2020 resolution is to eat more from the garden. And I got two little boys and life's crazy. I got several different jobs and hats I wear. And uh, I, we do all right eating from the garden on the weekends, but but I really want to, I need to be eating from my garden every night of the week. And I really want to make a conscious effort to do that. I agree with you. And uh, one of the things for me is I'm not gonna, I, in the past, I think I've had to have meat at every meal. 
so I'm not. I'm gonna make it a conscious effort a couple of nights a week just to eat vegetables, not to eat meat in every meal. And I think that'll help with the uh, swelling, help with swelling that, problem I got. That other, uh, yeah, that other resolution yep. you got. Yep. The second one I've got, and I haven't done this in a few years, and uh, I'm gonna do it this spring. I'm gonna grow more beans. I haven't really bush beans. I've grown a few pole beans here and there, but I really want to get out there and grow some bush beans this year. And the three of the ones we've got, we're adding that golden wax. I'm really excited about that yellow one, uh, the red burgundy one we've got. And both of those are bush? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I've got one coming. I'm, I don't have it added to the site yet, but I've grown it in the past, a uh, momentum bush bean, which is a really, really uh, productive hybrid. So I'm gonna grow all three of those and, and kind of mix them together and uh, be a little more diligent on my bush bean planting this year. I'm gonna plant, I'm gonna let, for the new year, I'm gonna let some of my spots that I've been growing on for a long time, my garden area, and this happens when you've been gardening for a long time and over and over the same spot. I've done good with cover crops, add manures, but I think some of it just needs a rest. So my new year resolution is to let some of it lay out. Now I say lay out, keep a cover crop on it, but not intensely garden it and to move to another spot that I have had laid out for the last few years and kind of let my old spot rest a little bit. It looks tired. It looks like it, looks it needs tired. to rest. The soil looks a little yeah. tired. I would, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. My last one here is, is, to, is, is not necessarily garden related, kind of is to double our YouTube subscriber count. Um, so this past year, we went from about 20,000 to 40,000. And um, this year I'd like to see us go from 40,000 to 80,000. And uh, to do that, we of course need you guys help. Don't keep us a secret. And uh, if you have any buddies that like to garden, tell them, you know, every Thursday night yeah. to tune in and watch the show. Or if there's some channel. subjects out there that you're interested in or you think somebody else would be interested in, shoot them my way. That's right. That's right. Let me go check on the cauliflower real quick, like. Okay. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, so there's our cauliflower we cooked. Looks burnt to me. I might have cooked it a minute or two too long, but I just tried it. It's pretty good. Um, give you a little, try a little taste there. That's different. It is good. So I put it in the air fryer on about 400 for, I don't know, 12, 15 minutes. Probably could have went closer to 12. But, um. Huh, that's intense. It's a good little snack there. If you never, you can do it in the oven like this, but uh, in the I air don't fryer, believe I could do it in the oven like that. You don't think so? No, no I've never had this like this before. He's, he was, he was uh, doubtful of the air fryer. Well, I was. We can do broccoli in there like that. Uh, lots of good stuff you can cook in that air fryer real quick like hmm. that. And the thing you don't, it's easy to clean. Just a nice little tool to have uh, cooking fresh vegetables out of the garden. Air fryers are kind of the cool thing to have right now. They're, they're handy. They're handy for sure. That's my favorite way to eat cauliflower right there. And um, you, you can't beat that. Mm -mm, sure. Let's get into some uh, questions from last week's show. And if we answer your question on the show, send us an email to cussserve at hostels.com with your address. And we'll be glad to send you a nice little prize. First question comes from Tricia McDonald. She says, why do the grasses... Excuse me. Why do the gases from mustard do in the soil? What does the what does the gases from mustard do in the soil once incorporated? I have my glasses on there. Okay. So we'll try to keep this as simple as possible. The the gases in the mustard uh, in the soil they convert to these things called isothiocyanates, or just called ITCs. Uh, ITCs are a natural fumigant. They're also made synthetically and used in a lot of your commercial fungicides and stuff as well. But those ITCs are a natural fungicide and a natural nematicide, meaning they're gonna kill harmful funguses and kill harmful um, nematodes. The trick with all that process though is you gotta be pretty boom, boom, boom fast with how you do it. So you wanna mow it, Within 20 minutes of mowing it, you want to till it in. You don't want to take a deep plow and fold it over. You want to till it in the top layer. Or hair. Or hair within 20 minutes. Otherwise, those gases all escape. Yep. So mow it, 
till it in within 20 minutes. If you've got a way to field pack it, that works great, but you can also tarp it. If the tarping, you can trap those gases in there and it's more effective. And then the last thing you wanna wait at least 14 days before you plant anything else there. All right, our second question comes from Dennis Shields and he wants to know when do you plant pumpkins in South Georgia? Dennis, if you're gonna plant a regular type pumpkin, you wanna do it a week to two weeks after Easter and grow it off in the springtime. Now, that being said, there's a couple of varieties I think you can get by with growing in the fall of the year here in South Georgia. One of them be the Seminole pumpkin, the other one being the Cherokee Tan. Right. And if you can get your hands on some Georgia Bulldogs, they'll grow off probably in the, uh, the fall of the year. Excuse me, between those three varieties, I think you're better off to grow your pumpkins in the springtime in South Georgia. We just have too much disease pressure to grow them off in the fall of the year. So there you have it. Plant them a week to two weeks after Easter, unless you're growing with these special varieties suited for South Georgia. Cherokee Tan, Seminole, or Georgia Bulldog. And the Georgia Bulldog is scarce as hen's teeth. Yeah. So you probably can't get no loose. Um, a lot of times when you do plant them in the spring, they will store on over into, say, uh, close to October for you. They can't promise to make all the way to Halloween. The Seminoles and stuff definitely will. Okay. The Rural Life wants to know, what do you recommend starting now in your zone 8B? Well, I can, I'll tell you what I just started in the greenhouse last week. I got cauliflower. I got more broccoli. I got cabbage. I got pak choy. I got a lot of beets started. Mm -hmm. I meant to get lettuce. I need to do that uh, sometime this week for the end of the week. So lots and lots of stuff starting in the greenhouse. Anything that you're going to be wanting to plant in early spring, you know, you're going to be going to plant taters and then you're going to plant those cool weather early spring crops. Anything you're going to be wanting to plant then, now's the time to get it started. Yep. Uh, fourth one here. Homestead in the suburbs says, Greg mentioned beets cooked in chicken broth. How do you cook it? Just boil it. I love more info. Got a bunch of beets in the garden right now. Yeah, well, it's pretty much the way I like them. Although Miss Hoss will add a little ginger. She'll add a little honey to that chicken broth. But you can kind of experiment. Chicken broth being the base to boil it in. You can play around with some more flavors in there. The honey thing really didn't do a whole lot for me. I don't. I love honey, but I just don't want it in my, my beets. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Chicken broth, and then you add whatever seasons you want to that. How do you cut them? You slice them or in little chunks? or I slice them, yeah. Slice them, like quarter them or slice them. Yeah, I don't, I don't dice them up real fine or anything like that. Maybe little chunks. Just like eating candy. If you ain't tried it, you got to try the beets, boil them in chicken broth. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for those questions. And if you have any other questions, put those in the comments. We'll be glad to get to them. One more thing. I did mention uh, potatoes just a minute ago. Uh, we have potatoes on the site for pre-order right now. We'll begin shipping potatoes towards the end of January. We'll do a whole show probably on the varieties we have uh, once we get them in. We're taking pre-orders for them now. Once we're gone, we're gone on the taters. Yep. Uh, and we actually want well, got we got a new variety, this heirloom variety called All Blue. Uh huh. So we're gonna have eight different varieties. Yep. Uh, a couple different sampler packs if you want to try, you know, four different varieties at a time. So you can go on the site, check those out. You can go and book your order, uh, go and order them, and then we'll ship them in January when you get them. I will say we're probably one of the only ones out there that will be shipping potatoes this time of year and uh, try to get them to those folks who yeah. live in the South who need yeah. to plant potatoes in late January, February, early March. Yep. All right. Hope everyone has a happy happy new year hope everyone is sticking to their resolutions already and we will see you guys on next week's show take care